Well, a little introduction. Most of you know who I am, but most of you don't, which is cool. Um, I was born and raised on the Navajo Indian Reservation, and, you know, you look at it. It's almost, the reservation is almost like a third world nation in itself, and so a lot of people don't know, like, reservation life because they're, we're 30 years behind, and some of our kids are still wearing 70s clothes, okay? But I noticed that they're coming back in out here, too. So, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, some things about the reservation, you know, the, you know, they're like, well, do you get monthly government checks? Man, I wish I did. Yeah. We don't, okay? And we don't own the land, you know, we don't, we saw all in trust land. And so if you're looking at me like, man, you know, I bet he has money. I do have money, but it came from a different government. So it... It didn't come from the Navajo Nation. It came from another source of government called the kingdom of God. Amen. So we had to do an alternative form of government change. And uh, that's what we do every day in our life is we present a new way of living, a new government to these reservations. And so, and those of you that are partners with us, thank you. Man, we are making a change in all these places. So, and, you know, while I was growing up, you know, my father was in ministry for over 40 years. And he's in heaven now. And uh, he's, he was probably one of my heroes in faith because he, he reached so many Navajo people without going to Bible school, without doing anything. He, he was so illiterate. I mean, he couldn't even read English or understanding. So he had to rely on the Holy Spirit. And so he, the Holy Spirit taught him to read and, and write English. And, and so he spent 40 years on the reservation, and he shook the reservation. And he, he, out of that 40 years, I mean, you're talking about 40 years of ministry, he started a church every year. He started over 40 churches on the reservation. Okay. One of the greatest evangelists that walked on that reservation, you know. And so, you know, I, I honor him and, I, you know, he's in heaven now enjoying his rewards. But can you imagine in a world where you don't understand English and don't know how to read it, but you know this is the truth? Wow. And so, and you're talking about walking by faith, amen? Yeah. amen? And so, you know, he he was one of my heroes. And most of, the, and, you know, most of the, Ministers on the reservation, I used to, as a kid, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about three years old. I'm talking about young kid to where I would study ministers that come in. He would invite different ministers. There's, there's another man named uh, Kenneth Begishi, and he used to uh, work with my father, Eugene Bennett, and he, um, they would invite different ministers into the reservation, and I would study these ministers, every one of them that came in. And so as I would study them, I would like, and then I would go home and copy them, okay? I would study what they taught. I would study how they held their mic, uh, their microphone, and I would study how the mic cord went into their pockets here. I mean, I would do the whole thing. And, then, and most kids, you know, their heroes were Superman, Spider-Man, and all of these other heroes. But my heroes were always preachers, men of God. And one day, this one man came, two of them actually, they came to our reservation and they, it was the very first faith convention that we had there. And so I was, I mean, I was like, man, these guys are so different. And I start following them around. I, I watch what they did, how they talked to people, how they treated people. One of the things that was so different about them that just amazed me as a kid was they gave they start giving their clothes to the, some of the natives there. They start giving some of their shoes and different things to them. And then they would, they never complain about an offering. We, one night we gave them an offering. You know, we just polished some rocks and we just put it in the offering for them. And man, they, they appreciate that. And I followed them. They, they stayed in this old beat up shotgun, probably more than shotgun, okay? Trailer, house trailer that we had them in and Man, they didn't complain. And I would listen because the walls were so thin. I would listen and see what they're doing. <laughs> because I wanted, I was going to imitate them. I was going to imitate. So I was like, listen to them. See how they conduct themselves. And so I would listen and listen. They would talk. I could hear them laughing. And, 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 and then I would hear them praying. I would hear them speaking the word. I was like, man, I want to be like them. 
there was something that drew me to them. And so then, you know, and then they would come out and I would just follow them. I would just follow them everywhere I went and, and just watch them. And so these two men, one was Kenneth Copeland and the other one was Jerry Savelle. And before they left the reservation, I said, I went up to them and says, one of these days I will be like you. And one of these days I will preach like you. And I will preach with you, is what I said to them. And man, Brother Copeland got a hold of me and he just prayed over me. Well, that's how the relationship with Brother Jerry started back in the 70s. And so ever since then, you know, we stayed in contact. Man, I thought, man, he, was, he is too cool, man. I still, as a teenager, I would still, he would come out and I would still say, man, that guy is too cool. <laughs> because <clears throat> one time we were preaching out in the Monument Valley on the reservation. He didn't come in a car. He didn't come wearing a suit like everybody else. Man, he came out on this motorcycle <laughs> and he rode through that reservation <coughs> and everybody was looking and turning. And so he came to the tent and I'm like, man, I want to be like that guy. <laughs> he wasn't riding any motorcycle. Oh, he was riding an Indian. <laughs> I was like, oh. And I went up to him and said, one of these days, I will be like you. <laughs> well, you know, we, then years later, we kept connecting. And then, um, we, you know, he, he helped me start in ministry, Brother Jerry and, and, um, and Brother Copeland as well. And, and so one of the things I always remember, you know, he would just did that laugh. He goes, Elson. You can have one of these too. You know, we'll show you how to do it. And so they showed me how to do it. And I, and I did it. And one time we were in California and on a uh, motorcycle tour that he had, Chariots of Light. And, and he invited me out there. So we came out there. Callie and I went out there and, and he couldn't wait. He's like, Elson, let's go sit over here together. I want to I tell you something. So we're sitting in the corner and then he goes, what kind of bike are you riding? I go, I got a Harley. I got a Harley over here. I got, I got two Harleys. I go, uh, what, uh, do you have an Indian? He go, oh, no. I'm, I go, believe me, I'm, I'm believing for an Indian. He goes, the Lord spoke to me. He said to buy you your first Indian. And so he bought me an Indian. He goes, an Indian should be riding an Indian. <laughs> And he goes, just go down to the dealership. And this, is, this is the heart of love. Yes. He says, just go down to the dealership. Pick out whatever you want. No one has ever done that to me. And so when, we, when I began to see the life of my fathers in faith, how they ministered this new government to me, I'm like, man, this is what I want to do for life. Yes. And so this is what I want to unfold to you today is when you're walking in this alternative form of government called the kingdom of God, it, we are, you know, I, I represent the Navajo Nation, you know, from, you know, we, 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 um, we know anything about the nation, the government side. You can ask me everything, the history, all of that. I'll tell you about it. I, you, know, I, you can say I'm an ambassador. Our family is an ambassador of the Navajo Nation, whatever the Navajo Nation is. We, and so when we come out here outside the reservation, we sometimes represent the Navajo Nation. But see, one of the things with the Navajo Nation is they're limited. And then I noticed that with the kingdom of God, there's no limitation. And so our mind should be reprogramming from one government to another government. So we see we're used to this natural world to where we're familiar with how natural laws work. But see, the Bible says you come from another world, which is the spiritual world. 
You know, as Native people, we know about the spirit world. In the spirit world, the fourth dimension, there's things from there that we need to learn how to transfer over here. Because our kingdom, our, our government is from the fourth dimension. But there's things that are in the fourth dimension waiting for you to transfer over here. So when I, when I come to, uh, I'm just going to say outside the reservations, I have to learn how to transfer things from the reservation over here. Okay, and so, and that's the way we got to understand, even from, from here, outside the reservation, I had to learn how to transfer things from here over to the reservation. So there's things that we have to learn because right now, this third dimension is not our kingdom. We are to rule in this kingdom. Now, what I want to talk to you about is, like I said, there's so many different spiritual leaders that God put in my path. You know, include, and and I, didn't, I didn't ask for these doors to be open. It was God that opened these doors. You know, you know one of them was Brother Hagen. And, uh, you, know, it's, you know, he imparted, uh, he, you know, and there's a whole story with Brother Hagen, but I'm not going to get into that. But, you know, one of the things he said to me is, Elson, I want to give you these three pallets full of books and tapes. And I'm going to teach you faith and the spiritual gifts. You know what? That was my rhema. You know? And so I didn't get a diploma. I didn't get no certificate. But these, man, these pallets, which I still have in my storage. <laughs> Deborah's like, when are you going to get rid of these? These are treasures. But, you know, and, and, and this is the thing I want you to understand. The, there's people that God placed in your life for a reason. Yes. Correct. You know, and it, there's things that God deposits into you. Now, this is the part I want you to understand. When you are walking with God, you must get established. Amen? Amen. It's getting established is so important. In Psalms 41... Verse 2, I'm just going to read the, um, well, let's just go there. Psalms 41. Uh, I still use the Bible. You guys use the Bible? Yes, sir. N n not the tablets that Moses used. <laughs> oh, that, was, that, was, that was a funny, just for you guys. In Psalms uh, 40, let's come down here to verse, uh, let's go down to verse 2. And he brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And so I look up in the, in the Amplified, I like the, how Amplified reads, and he says, I have made to... Uh, I have made you to be established. Now, that word established means to make firm. To make firm. And so when you are made firm to settle permanently, not to be moved easily, to fulfill or to make. And so God wants us to know that what he cares and what he, you care about, he cares about. He wants to make sure that you are established and set firm. There's another, one other, like I say, well, many other ministers that have come, but this one really stood out to me the most. Um, um, Wakana Jesus. Wakana Jesus is uh, of two different tribes. One is the Lakota and Navajo put together. But this man carried two names put together from different tribes. That's how much they honored him. And Wakana Jesus means stands holy. And stands holy means you are standing like the great forever spirit. We call him forever spirit. You guys call him God. The great creator. The great Jehovah. Yahweh. Stands holy means he just stands like the great creator. 
I mean, that's an, what a name, right? Yes. And when they make, when they pick these names, it's not like, hey, no, let's like they, the, the name they picked for me, my American name, Elson. Tell them I'll call them back. <laughs> like Elson. But think of it. I'm Native American. I mean, I think I'm full blood, so I don't know. That's what they tell me. But here's full blood Native American, right? And my name is Bennett. <laughs> Why didn't someone call me Stands Holy? <laughs> Bennett. That's my government name. Uh, I looked up Bennett one time and said, bless. I said, okay. But my original, our original family name was Benetni, meaning the one that comes from in the back of the line all the way back to in the front. And I like that. So I like bless, favored. Okay. And so when you get government names, it's kind of funny. Some people, you know, like some of the people on the reservation, I praise God I didn't get one of these names. Was, <laughs> should I say it? Anyway. <laughs> the word in Navajo is bike, meaning relatives. Okay. But of course, the people from the government butchered it. Okay. And they called them bike. Which is fine. If you're a big gay, praise the Lord. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think, I, you know, anyway. And the, but when God calls you, God gives you a name. Listen to what he says. He calls you when he made heaven and earth, right? When he made earth, what did he say? Earth be. Light be. University be. The universe was the planets be stars be right, right. Yeah. so in his word carries everything that the earth should be yes. don't you think god the creator gave us enough oil in this earth because he spoke his word from the beginning to the end and he knew exactly how much oil we're going to need, how much water we're going to need, how much food we're going to need and how much everything that the earth will produce. So when he says earth be, he unfolded everything that the earth should carry, all the trees, all the animals, all the people, everything within the earth, that everything that every creature that he was going to ever create and need was plenty. Yeah. Yeah. So don't you think when God calls you, he did the same thing to you? Yeah. Everything that you will ever be in need, every finances, every, every healing, every part that you're going to ever need is all in you. Yeah. Well, he put all the sources, all the, really, all the mineral resources in the earth, right? Yes. Don't you think he did the same thing to you? Because you're made, well, we men are made from dirt, which is earth. But the women, right? They took a couple of our ribs. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone because I got to drive home with two. <laughs> anyway, that, this man stands holy. He really did live up to his name. And he would, he would, throughout my life, he would, every time I'm in trouble, somehow he would know. Uh, let me look, go through some of these scriptures because of time. You, know, we, and I'm, you can read them at home. And one of the things that in, in Psalms, well, Psalms 145 is 145 in verse 15 says this, the eyes of all that wait upon the Lord are wait upon thee. Thou givest them their meat in due season. But I went ahead and did a little study for you since, you know, I'm gracious. Amen. And so the word meat means plenty. 
And then due season means a season you've been longing for. So God's saying, I want to give you as long as you wait. Notice the qualification is wait. Those that wait. And uh, those that wait upon the Lord. <clears throat> and so when I begin to look at, into this more and more, Isaiah 30, verse 18, that very latter part, the end of that verse, it says, blessed are they that wait for him. Then I look up the word wait. Okay, what does wait mean? So wait is to keep moving forward with expectation. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Stand, stand, standing holy. Standing holy is we still in the time when we say, Lord, we thank you for this healing. And then there's a time of standing and waiting and patience until it comes to, there it is. So here in this time slot is very important. Everybody can say amen. Everybody can get a prayer. But not everybody goes through and finishes the waiting process. But in this time of wait, wait, Terry, come here. Come here. So, <clears throat> he's looking good today. Okay, I want you to make a stance. I mean, I don't want to push you around. So, this is how standing holy means. See, the devil will come against you and try to push you around. He'll push you around. He'll push you. Not knowing... And not telling you where he's going to push. Have you heard push your buttons? <clears throat> Traffic. No, I'm going to leave that one alone. <clears throat> so this is making a stand. But as you're standing, move like this towards me. You're, make, you're making progress. See, the devil's pushing. And come on, come against me. There you go. See, this is what's going on. Standing holy. See, thank you. Man, you, you a football player? So here, it means to be, have a progress. As you're waiting, you're progressing. And so that's the thing I want you to understand. When you are waiting, <clears throat> you have to understand this, excuse me. <clears throat> Standing holy. This is one of his quotes. Things happen to them that wait. He's referring to people that wait. But things also happen for them. Oh, man. <clears throat> I'm like, that, man, that shook me. He says, things, when you're waiting, the devil wants you to quit. The devil wants you to just say, no, walk off and say, well, I guess it wasn't the timing of God. I guess it wasn't the plan of God. I guess God didn't want me to have this <clears throat> and walk away. Because, see, you're, you're thinking you're from earth time. God doesn't work in earth time. God works in our government time, which is the fourth dimension. See, in our government time is different. See, the Navajo Nation time is right now. What time is it, Navajo Nation? <clears throat> 9.17. What time is it here? 11.17. 11, so big difference. So I could act like I'm 9.17. You don't want me to see me. You don't want to see me at 9.17. <laughs> okay. See, that's the way we are. We're still on Navajo Nation time and we're showing up late for things. You're on Indian time. <clears throat> But see, what I'm saying is you're on earth time. That's why the pressures of earth come. And you don't, you want to just give up because so-and-so said and so-and-so said. No, you go back to your manual of how our government works. And you're going to find out that in the fourth dimension, it's already. It's already done. 
So one of the things you got to realize is when you're in the wait time, this is the part that people don't, I don't hear Christians saying this. We all want to go higher, right? You hear people, praise and worship leaders, they say, go higher, go deeper, right? But see, no one ever says receive the love of God. Because how can you give, how can you give something that you don't have and don't receive? So we have to learn how to receive vertically so we can give horizontally. And so we're receiving the love of God. What is it? God is love. We know that, right? That's all he knows how to do. And that's all how he responds is through love. He is love. And that's how way he responds. And so the love of God always, the one of the characteristics that I've learned from Brother Jerry and Kenneth was love gives. Right? Love gives. That's all love can do is give. For God so loved the world that he, yeah, he gave us this whole government. Now, let's look at another one. As we're focusing, let's go, matter of fact, let's, I want to do this. Let's go to uh, Second Chronicles where we are going back. Second Chronicles, in there, it says this. I want to read out an Amplified. Oh God, I will, excuse me, will you not exercise judgment upon them? For we have no might Listen to that. We have no might to stand against the great company that is coming against us. We do not know what to do. Have you ever been there? You're like, man, there's, look, God, can you see how many people are coming against me? Here he's talking about, Jehoshaphat is talking about a whole armies coming against him and surrounded him. And then he, one of the things he says in this is, we do not know what to do. How many know he's in a waiting time? But notice the Lord. Notice what he says. But our eyes, which is a good thing. But cancels everything out, right? But our eyes are where? In the fourth dimension. On him. Our eyes is in the fourth dimension. Our eyes is not in the natural. Then God answers and says, hey, since your eyes are upon me in the fourth dimension, um, that battle you're in is not yours. Uh, it's mine. And so that's what you do in times of waiting is get your eyes off the natural circumstances. The natural circumstances are about to change. They're temporary. Get your eyes in the fourth dimension. And so how do you do that? Well, praise God, you asked that question. I just happened to have that in my notes. So another thing, uh, Yahweh, or the creator, to wait upon him, listen, this is another definition of wait that I, we found, that I found. In the Hebrew word wait means to tie, to twist, to bind, to entwine, to make a rope. Oh, I like that. So to collect as a collecting strands for strength. The more strands you have, the more strength you have. To make a cord stronger. So waiting on the Lord. Binds and those strict those strands, those little strands when you're making a rope, are your scriptures. And the more you have not just read scripture, I mean you have working knowledge of the scripture, you have working understanding of the scripture, and it, and it becomes stronger and stronger. And this is what listen to him. You begin to focus on who? On him, on love. Focus on love. Focus on the love of God because the love of God, don't focus on how much you love him. Focus on how much he loves you. Okay? Because when you focus on you, the problems will get worse. When you focus on him, you begin to see, hey, God loves me. 
God loves me and he loves me. Therefore, he's not going to let me, whatever you're going through, fail. Be in shame. So God began to focus on how much God loves you. The next thing you need to do, and all of this I got from Paul, you know, the writer of Ephesians. Yeah, he wrote it down for us. And he was like, man, Paul, thank you. I know what to do in time of waiting. Now, you can find this whole thing, that his outline in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 on down. Just read the whole thing. I like in the Amplified Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, that how God prearranged everything for us. That he already prearranged and set us up. For what? He, Paul called this a good life. So God already ahead of time, beforehand, he already set us up, right? Look at that. For we are God's handiwork, his workmanship, recreated, one translation says regenerated. I like that one. In Christ, born anew that we may do good works, which God predestined, plan ahead of time for us. Taking the path which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them living the good life which he prearranged, made ready for us. I'm telling you that God, there's God, there's things that God has already done. See, we're, we're in the wrong time zone. We're still in that Navajo time, that reservation time. But we need to get over here in God's time and say, hey, it's already done. Everything that God's going to ever do for me, he's already done it. He's already been here. He's already healed me. He's already delivered me. He's already gave me eternal life. Yes. Everything you need, he's already. Already. Now the whole word for that is I don't. Okay. <laughs> Do we have any Navajos in this place besides our little group? Stand up. I want to see these. I want to see. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, all the way from Rock Point. Yeah, praise the Lord. All right. But see, one of the things we got to realize, everything's already done. So I asked the Lord, I asked the Holy Spirit. He's here to help us. Show me what the definition of mercy, because everywhere I looked, it was like, it's the same as grace, favor. So I go, Lord, the Holy Spirit, show me what mercy means. I mean, it's just a good question, right? Holy Spirit. So here he is. And he took me back to Ephesians where Paul said this. And then I began to realize that each time, what I did is I highlighted love. I highlighted mercy. I highlighted grace. I highlighted faith. And I realized that Paul had outlined this whole thing, what mercy means, what love does, what grace has done. And what faith does. Man, I was like, thank you, Holy Spirit. And so when I was reading this, one of the things that I've learned through this thing was mercy is what Brother Copeland calls our wealthy place. Man, that was a good teaching back in the day, right? Whoo, I got a lot out of it. I ran, I don't know how many tape series I bought, just running over and over and over and getting into me. But say, this is the thing. The wealthy place is where God wants us to dwell. Our wealthy place is the fourth dimension. Every answer for your business, your ministry, your family, your life is in that place. And so your wealthy place is where God predestined you, prearranged plan, the, the prearranged plan of God. Your good life is all in mercy. Have you noticed the Bible says the mercy is renewed every day? God makes sure it doesn't get old like, like manna did back in the day. But it's going to be renewed every single day. Why? It's there for you. So here's the mercy. The mercy place is like a big warehouse. That's the way the Holy Ghost showed me. A big warehouse. It has your cars. 
It has your home. It has your healing. It has books and plans that God has for you. It also has body parts that you need. Because God already knew on this date, on this that, this is what's going to happen. You're going to need a kidney. And see, all God wants you to do is go to your warehouse. In the warehouse, everything God provided. See, if you can get a hold of how our government works, you'll spend time less praying. God, heal me. No, God says, no, I already healed you. See, that's what Jesus was trying to show them. He says, oh, ye of little faith. It's not that they didn't have faith. Jesus would ask them, where's your faith? It wasn't, he wasn't saying you don't have faith. He was saying this, as a matter of fact, in Greek, it's this number, G-40-102. Which is the God kind of faith. Ooh. The God kind of faith. And then when he talks about everything that is born of God, everything that comes from God, he was referring to this faith, the God kind of faith, which is our victory. There's a lot of faith in this world. You could have faith in your car. You could have faith in your money. You could have faith in your own ability. You could have faith in whatever. The earth is flat. I'm going to leave that one alone too. <laughs> so you can have faith in so many different things, but God and Jesus was telling me, you need this God kind of faith. I'm trying to show you how it works. So he explained it to them and just, I don't know, outlined for him in Mark 11, right? And how it's supposed to work. And a lot of it is done by saying. And another thing is he said is believe in your heart. So everything, there must be a fourth dimension. Fourth dimension must be in our hearts. And whatever we see in our fourth dimension, whatever I see my father do, whatever I, I hear my father say in the fourth dimension on the inside of me is who, what I say and what I do, Jesus says. And so this fourth dimension is very important to us because this is where we need to learn to focus as we're waiting. We focus on the inside. We focus on each word that God gives us and we're making strands and each scripture is making it stronger and stronger. And as the devil pushes, you're still pushing back and saying, hey. And you're going to be like Paul saying, none of these things move me. Why you're more focused on the inside. You're focused on the fourth dimension. Now, and so the next thing the Lord showed me is Grace. We know about grace. Grace qualifies us. Grace, uh, I like this one here. This is, uh, the Holy Ghost told me. Grace, when you're studying grace, Elson, always remember this. This is your gauge for grace. Do versus done. I'm going to go with done. Okay? So every time I'm reading or praying, are you going to do or are you going to go with done? So you cannot separate, there again in Ephesians chapter 2, you'll find this out, that you are saved by grace yes. through faith. Yes. And the end, you cannot separate these. Matter of fact, you can't separate all four of them. You can't do that. Because if once you separate one of them, you take one out, it ain't going to be the same. It's not going to work. It's just like gas, oil, Right? You need gas and oil. You need a motor. You need a vehicle. And then you definitely need blinker fluid. <laughs> because without this, the vehicle's not going to run. 
So you need all these things to make a vehicle run. If you want, while you're on your waiting pad, you're moving forward, progressing, you got to begin to look at how much God loves me and he's already prepared a room for me and everything that I need is already in that room. He gave it to me before I was born. He predestined me. He opened doors for me. All my steps are ordered of the Lord. I hear from him and I'm going to walk through every opportunity, every door that's open open for me. I'm not going to be without. I am the heal. I am the blessed. I am favored of the Lord. Because he loves me. Mercy says, yes, he loves you. He prepared all these things. Then grace comes and says, I qualified him. I made sure that he's fully qualified and that he's the righteousness of God and he is of this government. And faith comes behind there and faith says, yes, we're going to take it all. Amen. And see, that is what I'm saying is that's what God has done for us. In your waiting pad, focus on his love. Focus on his mercy, what he prepared for you. Focus on his grace that it is already done. It's already accomplished. Okay, listen here. God is not waiting on your faith. Listen, God is not waiting to move and waiting on you to produce faith. No, he already gave it to you. The Bible says that we have, we live by the very faith of the Son of God. We carry, he says, hey, when we got born again, he took, there was a great exchange. He took what I had, placed it over here, and he gave me what he has. I have his love. I have his mercy. I have his grace. And definitely I have his faith. And with this faith, I'm able, it enables me to raise the dead. It enables me to heal the sick. It enables me to do things that no man has, can do by themselves. I'm telling you, this, this, this whole thing that we're talking about works. And, and so um, let's continue here. Let me finish up here. The next thing I want to add to this is praise. You need praise. Praise. Hallelujah. Praise is so important. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just waiting on the spirit of the Lord. Hang on. Thank you, Jesus. Love gives life. Mercy preserves what love has given, your provision. Grace qualifies you, gives you, gives you his identity. Faith receives what love gave and takes what mercy preserves, knowing that grace qualified you and me. And these are the four elements that Paul talked about. And then he went into, after that, he went into stand. Is that what he said? After, done, after you've done all, stand. So this word stand really come up to me. And it, I go back to this uh, spiritual leader. One of our, oh, uh, I believe he was Cherokee, Navajo, and Lakota all mixed together. And they call him standing holy. And in standing holy, the, he lived up to his name. And one of the things that I know he, he just always encouraged people. I mean, you could be in, the, I, I don't know how he knew. I know it was the Holy Ghost, of course. But there's times when I was going through things, I man, he would, he would just be there. And then just give me that word that I need. But I, I've learned one of these things from standing holy is how to stand yeah. in times of trouble when things don't look good. And so... One of the things I've also learned that Brother Copeland said here, this is a quote from Brother Copeland, Kenneth Copeland. When you pray, you, you lay hold of things. But when you praise, you win the battles. So prayer is important, 
but the praise part. The praise part. And then this is Brother Jerry Savelle. The greatest expression of faith, the greatest expression of faith is thanksgiving and praise. And I believe that's important. I believe that even with Jesus, the same way. You know, going back to that story in 2 Chronicles, where it says that Jehoshaphat, the Lord spoke to him, this battle is not yours. And then we, if you look down at verse 22 there, uh, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 22, it says there, and when they began to sing and praise the Lord. Notice the word when. <clears throat> when they began to do this, the Lord said an ambushment. Man, I love that. The Lord sent confusion to the enemy's camp. The Lord sent an ambushment and a confusion. In other words, they began to fight one another. And when they were fighting one another, we were progressing. There's a, well, there's something about moving forward while you're waiting. Look at it that way. Every time you're in the wait time, you just begin to say, Lord, thank you that you love me. My steps are ordered of the Lord. I will show up on time. I will meet people I need to meet. I thank you, Lord. And then at midnight. But, you know, notice what they did back in, back in Jehoshaphat's day. The Lord says, it's my battle. All I want you to do is begin to praise. When they begin to praise, God said an ambushment. And then guess what happened? The, the things, the, uh, the treasures and the wealth of the enemy came to them. Three days. Can you imagine picking up squash blossom, Navajo silver, Navajo? Oh, that's my treasure. Okay, what's your treasure? <laughs> you guys be like, ah, oh, picking up. What are you, you going to pick up in your three days? See, you guys aren't expecting. <laughs> you got to be expecting. Amen. Every day I get them and say, I don't know why people just give me money. Everywhere I go, strangers give me money. They just give me money. I mean, they're always, I mean, I'd be sitting at the restaurant in Amarillo, Texas, and someone comes and says, hey, here's some money. I'd be putting the gas and, hey, here's some money. I, I just don't know how. I do know how <laughs> because I've been saying it. Amen. It's been in me, built in me for the last 40, 45 years in me and say, hey, this is what you say. Yeah. Every time sickness tries to come on me, I know what to say. Yes. It's not, I know, I, you know, don't ever do this. I know what to pray. No, no, no. I know what to say because healing is already in me. Yes. The fourth dimension is or I carry the fourth dimension. Yes. I am the fourth dimension. Yes. I am the fourth dimension. Yes. I am the blessed. I am the heal. Yes. I am and that's what, that's what the father was saying. Hey, I am whatever you need. I am. So here's Paul, Acts 16, 25, verse 26. Paul at midnight, right, in solace, prayed and sang praises. When they sang praises, the prisoners heard them. So it must be loud praises. Whew. And suddenly an earthquake took place. The foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately all the doors were open. Did you hear that? Yeah. Doors were open and everyone's bands were loosened. Is that great prayer or great praise? Yeah, praise. Because there's something, notice the Bible didn't say the Lord, everybody heard them praying. It says everybody heard the praise. So there's something about praise. When you're in that waiting time, you praise. That's how you move forward is by praising. And you move forward by praising. And there's one more nugget I want to leave with you as you're waiting is Thanksgiving. Because I noticed that the Holy Spirit loves Thanksgiving. So do I. All the turkey. No. I was going to tell you my Native American Thanksgiving joke, but. I probably shouldn't because we're in a church. Now, <laughs> have you noticed, have you ever read 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18? It says there, be happy, rejoice, be glad, 
be glad heartedly continuing, in other words, always, you know, and without ceasing, right, to pray, thanking, thank God in everything. How, how many of you ever thank God for everything? How many of you ever thank God for people that are coming against you? Lord, thank you. I mean, we had people come against me years ago. I mean, uh, it happens all the time. There's people that don't like me. And I said, thank you, Lord. I don't know. Do they have rallies that they come together and they want to, there's actual rally about you and how they can get rid of you? Okay, I must be the only one. So they had this rally, how can we get rid of Elson Bennett from the reservation? And well, that's what they did to Jesus too. And I heard about one of our uh, ladies that go to the church call me and says, they, you know what, they're having a rally? And uh, about you and how to get rid of you and your family? Oh, no. I go, you know what? Um, why don't you go to the store, get them some water, and see if they need anything, if anybody's hungry, let's take care of them. <laughs> how do you respond? Love, like your father. Because your, your enemy is not the people, your enemy. This, this is when I told the Lord, Lord, I love you so much. What can I do for you? He goes, do you really love me? I go, yeah, I do. He goes, go get what I love. It's people. And me coming against him is not going to be getting people for him. That's going to be protecting me in my uh, reputation, which I don't have anymore. And so therefore I said, I got to get these people. How can we get them love? We sent water to them and it shut the whole thing down. And they made sure, hey, this water's from Covenant of Faith, Elson Bennett Ministries. But you know what? No matter what they did, no matter what they tried to do, we learn how to stand. And it's so important that you have spiritual leaders and stay with them yes. because they teach you things that they've been through. Yes. And this Thanksgiving, notice what it says, be happy, rejoice, be glad, continue to pray, thanking God in everything, no matter what the circumstance may be, for this is the will of God. Man, I love the being in the will of God. Yes. This is the will of God. For you who are in Christ Jesus, but listen to what he says, do not quench the spirit. When we begin to be unthankful, that's when we quench the spirit. See, all, the years, all these years religion would say, well, your, your long hair quenches the spirit. <laughs> no, your short dress quenches the spirit. Your sin quenches the spirit. Your this, your action quenches the spirit. No, he says, no, you are the ones that are believers. You're the one that quenches the spirit. Is that who he's, he's referring to here? The believers, the ones that are in Christ Jesus. You being ungrateful, you not rejoicing, you not being glad. It quenches the spirit. It stops the power of God. It stops the anointing. And you're wondering, Lord, 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 where's my breakthrough? It's not up to the Lord. The devil's already defeated. Sin's already been judged. Jesus says, I've come. All power and authority has been given to me. Say all. That's a good Texas word there, all. You all have been given the power. Yes, sir. Yes. All powers. All power. yes. Jesus gave you all the power. Yes. If he gave you all the power, yes. then there's someone that's powerless. Yes. And you got to keep thinking that way. That's why Paul says, renew your mind to this new government. Renew your mind, you're in the fourth dimension. So listen to this. Let's just go, let's just let's finish up here. And, and um, 
Colossians, we all know this, uh, 20, verse 2, 6, and 7. As you have therefore received Christ as the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built in him, established in faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Faith and thanksgiving go hand in hand. We know that. And so thanksgiving, listen to this. In John, we're not going to turn there. In John, you can read, study all of this at home. John chapter 11, verse 41 through 42, Jesus gave thanks. Have you noticed that? Jesus gave thanks before he raised Lazarus from the dead. He gave thanks. He looked up to heaven and says, Father, thank you for hearing my prayers. Thank you for hearing me. And then Jesus says, all the miracles that I have done, everything that I've done, it's not me. It's the Father that doeth do it. And so Jesus, the first thing, one of the, one of the things that he did is I've every, every, before every miracle, he gave thanks. So then the Bible says in, in 1 Thessalonians, we just read, that if you don't give thanks, you quench the spirit. The power is not there. And so Jesus, hey, what did he do? He says, I want the power to raise this person from the dead. Thank you, Father. It don't look good now. In the natural, it don't look good. This guy's been gone for four days. It don't look good. And he stinketh. King James right there, King James. I know King James too. And so here, and uh, he says, this is, this is don't look good, but... Thank you, Father. See, have you noticed that Jesus is in that waiting time and he gave thanks? And what happened? He raised Lazarus from the dead. And in the same, when he gave, in John chapter 6, he gave thanks to the multitude that were out there and there was this fish and bread, right? And so therefore, before he fed the multitudes, he gave thanks. How did the fish and the bread multiply? By giving thanks. Yes. Who did it? The Holy Spirit did it. Yes. Who raised Lazarus from the dead? The Holy Spirit. Yes. Who raised Jesus from the dead? The Holy Spirit. Yes. That fourth dimension, the Holy Ghost is right on the inside of you. Yes. He's carrying all of your answers. He's carrying your warehouse on the inside of you. All you need to do is learn how to release it yes. Yes. by saying. That's good. By saying. How do you say? By your words, by your praise, by your thanksgiving. And so here, th this translation, I can't find this translation. I found it. Uh, I will find it. But one of the translations says concerning, uh, this was, I found this, it was referring to Jesus feeding the multitudes. And then in John 6, 23, it, one of the translations says, the Holy Spirit talk about this place, mention Jesus giving thanks the Holy Spirit seemed to be more pleased with thanksgiving than the miracles of the multitudes, multiplication of food. So the Holy Ghost was waiting and he was so pleased with the thanksgiving. He mentioned the thanksgiving, not the miracle, mentioned the thanksgiving. Don't you think the Holy Spirit is waiting on you? He's waiting for you. He goes, hey, I know where your truck is. I know where your home is. I know, uh, I know where your homes, trucks and vehicles, I know who has them. And I, they're looking for you, but I need you to give thanks. I need you to hear your voice. Listen, the great wall of Jericho. Some of you says, well, I can't praise. Elson, you don't understand. I don't sing. Hey, you're like me. <laughs> I don't sing. I actually been fired from many of Callie's projects. <laughs> and then she rehired me for speaking. So I speak. Uh, but God is waiting for us. In the wall of Jericho, God, there was thousands of people out there. God Beforehand, before the, the foundation of the world, he knew who needs to be at that wall. He already, ahead of time, gave them a voice to be a voice. 
a sound. To be a sound. This is why it's important. You got to speak. It has to be your voice. It can't be Brother Copeland's voice. It can't be Jerry's voice. It has to be your voice. Because God gave you a voice and made you a voice. He gave you a sound. But there had to be a certain sound. You see the government using sound now? To destroy their enemy? To get a hold of crowd? So God already knew about sound waves. And he knew about sound waves. And so therefore he says, I want to have this person there, this person there. This one. He goes, I need that certain sound to be here at one place. And I think the reason why it took him forever walking around seven times, it wasn't about the number. It was about, is everybody there yet? Because some people were on wrong time. And so, and so when everybody showed up, God says, everybody's there. Okay. And the count of three, we're going to shout at our wall. Yeah. Notice Jehoshaphat. Can you imagine a whole nation in trouble? And we're going to send our present worship leaders out in front. That's not a good plan. <laughs> Especially if you're in the military, a praise and worship band's going to go in the front lines. Ooh. But see, they're in another dimension. Yeah. Yes. Right. And God was saying, yeah, we're going to send the praise and worship band. Have you seen the praise and worship band? Yeah. They're not fighters. They're not warriors. They're musicians. God says, no, I, I'm going to use them. Put them in the front. Come on. This is God's battle. So how do you know it's God's battle? All he's going to tell you is what to say, what to sing, what to do. And you're progressing, progressing. God says, my battle. So he sends the praise and worship band. You know the rest of the story. They won. And here is Jericho again, the same thing God said. Okay, I need every individual out here. They carry a sound that I made them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And released at one time is going to create a sound wave that's going to cause these walls to come down. Yes. And when they shouted, you, that's why it's important that you come in person to church yes. to per to bring your portion of the anointing, your portion of your sound, because there's walls in this city that need to be broke down. There's walls in the nations that need to be broke down. You, God needs your voice here. In person. So begin to give thanks, because Jesus gave thanks in everything he did. Now, another thing I want to end here. What can I Great elder also said this. Don't, ma don't major on the fall. Major on getting up. Another quote, don't quit. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Yeah. Well, stands holy is Brother Jerry Savelle. We gave him this name, and he was so excited that night. We had a ceremony that we present this name. Um, and he, he, was, he was so excited that night, and he had some uh, issues with his back. And we got out there, and the drums going, native drums going, and he's, you know, I, I told him what he needed to do. And um, Antonio, <clears throat> can you take my Bible? 
Um, and he was so excited. I'm just thinking. Um, <laughs> he stood there and we put the eagle feather on him and we begin, they begin to sing his, his name. They begin to sing his name. As they begin to sing his name, you know, the power of God just hit him. And he looked up and he, and he looked up and he goes, and as you can see the change in his face. And after, after the ceremony, he came up to me. He goes, Elson, I went in there with a back issue, back pain. Because it was hurting so bad. But when that drum began to go, and I mean, all the, they're all singing, and I began to sing, and I began to sing with them, and that back pain left. He goes, I'm, I'm healed. But, you know, that there's things that, that we have to realize. There's God put, especially this church, God put, not only his anointing, his vision, his, his, everything he walked in is, is yours. But greater because Jesus also made you more than a conqueror. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Healing is yours. You don't have to beg God for it. Healing is yours. You are the healed. Amen. Amen. Oh, I, uh, what time is it? Uh -uh. Thank you. Well, hallelujah. Oh, the, the anointing is still strong on me, so let me just flow. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Callie, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God.